Hi friends. So what is your absolute center of gravity? I recently heard Bishop Barron, Robert Barron, ask that question. What is your absolute center of gravity? So let me back up before we answer that question together. Um, Luke 8. So in Luke 8, um, it's that passage where Jesus' mother and brothers come to Jesus and they want to see him. And so some in the crowd, maybe his disciples say, hey, uh, you know, your, your mother and your brother, they, they want to come see you. And Jesus says, you know, who are my mother and my brothers? And he answers his own question. He says, my mother and my brother are those who hear the word of God and act upon it. My mother and my brother, brothers are those who hear the word of God and act upon it. First of all, this, this clarification. Uh, tradition tells us that uh, Jesus uh, did not have brothers through Mary. Maybe, maybe he had uh, brothers uh, like um, through Joseph. Joseph was married before Mary. But uh, a longstanding tradition is, is that um, he had no brothers or sisters. Um, but the culture of the time is that extended family is the nuclear family. Uh, there, there, there weren't a blurring of lines there. Um, so cousins and second cousins, you know, you're all together, you're all living in the same village, same town, and you're all family. Um, so these are relatives, you know, of Jesus. Um, okay, that clarification. Um, the second clarification is that uh, Jesus is saying, listen, um, my, 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 my family is not going to carry on with my ministry, which is often what would happen, um, whether it's a ministry or your blacksmith or your any number of trades, um, is passed on to family members and it goes through the generations, okay? So Jesus is not diminishing or dishing his mother um, or his relatives. He's not downplaying them. He's not certainly not saying, I don't love them and they're not important to me. That's not what he's doing at all. And I'll come back to that. Um, what he's saying is that when it comes to being a member of my family at, as the kingdom of heaven, as, as the family of God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you're going to be a part of my family, how's, here's how to be a part of my family. You hear my word and you act upon it. You let my truth pierce you about who I am and who you are, about our identities and our missions together. And then you go out and live on and live that truth. You act upon it. That's what makes us um, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. And it happens because Jesus himself, the son of our father, is his act. That's exactly what he does. He hears the word of the Father and he acts upon it as he joins our human nature. And joining our human nature, he calls us to be adopted sons and daughters of the Father through his humanity and through his example, hearing the word of God and acting upon it. That's what makes us brothers, relatives, sisters, mothers, fathers part of the family of God. Okay, that, that's important. And that's important also because here's what we do as Christians. We allow any number of other persons or things or activities to have claimant of supremacy over our lives. Or let me say it the way Bishop Robert Barron said, um, to uh, be the absolute center of gravity in our lives. So we can spend most of our time investing in and worrying about and, um, and being with and raising up and providing for our children. Or um, our spouses can be our absolute center of gravity. Um, or our jobs can be our absolute center of gravity. Or, um, uh, you know, our, our consumption of alcohol or of drugs or of gambling or um, our pursuit of entertainment or pleasure can be our absolute center of gravity or our involvement with our habits and our hobbies can be the absolute center of our gravity. Any number 
of things can have supremacy over our lives or people or activities or pursuits. And so much so that that truly is the center of our, of our gravity rather than Christ being the center of our gravity. And this is something of what I think Jesus is getting at in, um, in Luke 8. And this is what he's trying to say to us. Is that if we really want to live as if Jesus is family to us, then he needs to be family to us. And he needs to be our family. And we need to put him as our family and members of our family above everything else, even our own family. And what he's not trying to say is that our family is not important. Or that our spouses or our jobs or that our education or that our sports or that any number of other stuff in our life isn't important. It was important to him in his day, his mother and his brothers and his sisters, his relatives, his friends, his disciples, having a good meal, a good glass of wine, um, doing uh, the mission, right? Sweeping, uh, walking on the countryside and taking in the, the glory of God's creation, all that stuff, uh, laughing. Uh, uh, that was important to him. Human living was important to him. And it needs to be important to us. But it cannot have absolute supremacy over our lives. It cannot, that cannot, they cannot be the center of our world. Christ needs to be that. And when he is that, here's the beautiful part. Here's the Christian message, right? When we make Jesus the center of our gravity, when he has supremacy over our lives, when he's our highest value, then we love and live with everyone else the way they deserve to be loved and lived with. We love them not just with our own love, and we live with them not with our, just with our own energy and our own ability to be attentive to them and care for them and provide for them. We love them with the love of Christ. Because the love of Christ comes first in our life. And then we love ourselves with God's love. And then we are capable of loving others the way that they deserve. Not just with our own human love and appreciation, but with divine love. That we share in, we live in. And it goes on from them. Uh, when they're not our mission, but God is our mission, then from the mission that we receive from God, we can mission them so much better, right? When they're not our world and God is our world, then we can bring them into that world. And they can orbit around God rather than around me. Or I can set myself an orbit around God and bring them into that orbit rather than making them my orbit. How many times have we run into moms and dads who made their children their center of gravity or their orbit? Only, only um, to see them once they leave the nest, fly the coop, that um, their world falls apart, their marriage falls apart, and their hearts are broken. Because their kids go off and make their own life because we didn't build their lives, not around us and us around them, but around God, who, who, who could then remain the center of their gravity and we both share the orbit together, right? How many times have I talked to moms and dads and grandparents who, um, who poured their lives into their children and to everything that their children were involved in? Their education, their sports, their their um, their musicals, um, their you know their learning instruments, their um, their plays, and uh, and any other extracurricular activities, right? Just poured into that and sat in those shows and those sporting events and 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 and, and was part of everything that they were part of. None of that's bad, by the way, right? Only to um, 
but never did that um, where Christ was first and faith was first and, and, and the re relationship with Christ was first, not just for their kids, but for themselves. And then when their kids go off into adulthood, their kids don't have faith. And um, their hearts are broken because they set their kids into an orbit around all kinds of other things and then they orbited around that. And then when um, all that went away and they went off to orbit their lives around any a number of other things and set the center of their gravity around any number of other uh, things or people in life, here they are with nothing. And they spent all their lives making their children and their activities of their children, uh, who they loved and rightly so, the center of their gravity. Right? I mean, who wants that hearted? Both for themselves and for their children. No one wants that. So stop living like that, for God's sakes, and for your own heart's sake, and for the sake of your children. Make God the center. Make him your family. Make him your brother. And how to do that? Jesus says, it ain't rocket science. Hear the word of God and live it. And when you hear, truly allow yourself to hear who he is from him and who you are to him. When you hear his words of love and of life and his plan for your life, then that will take supremacy over everything else and everyone else. And when you act upon it, then you orbit your life around him and then everyone else who you have influence over because of the way you're living your life, deep in his love and his love deep in you and this great familiar a bond, this great intimate bond, this, this great family bond. They will be attracted to it. Your kids will be attracted to it. Your grandkids will be attracted to it. Your spouse will be attracted to it. Your friends will be attracted. And then they're not, they're not going to break off in, of orbit into something else. They're going to remain with you. And they're going to remain with you because you've loved them, not with just your own love. Or, or let's put it frankly, our own needy love. Right? you love them with the love that they need. you love them with the love of God. And that will have such a gravitational pull in their life. And not just to you, but to God himself. And then the two of you, or the three of you, or your family, or so many other people who are in activities and stuff in your life that is important, uh, won't drift away out into the emptiness of space where it's hard to find them and get to them. Now, we'll, we'll remain close as a family who have built our lives around the family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is the center of gravity for the entire universe. Till next time, friends.